No spoilers. While you're here, drop a like on the video. Quite nearly ruined by one of the worst theater experiences of my life. Rude, inconsiderate, and immature people on top of my horribly maintained theater was just awful. Awful. So it is a testament to the quality of this film that I can walk away saying still that they absolutely nailed it. I can't believe it's been five years since the first Spider-Verse. As much as I love that one up front, I was sort of bewildered by how acclaimed it was, but it makes me so happy. It gets better over time. The 2018 game and its expand alone Miles game did a lot, but these movies really made me love the character. Some of the best animation ever, perfect scripts, fantastic characters, storytelling and soundtracks, absolutely amazing. So I was stoked to see what else they had cooking and there was lots to live up to. To my amazement, it recaptures lightning in a bottle. Not without a couple growing pains or the fact that this is part one of two as the third film comes next year. It's without an ending in the traditional sense, but that's okay. I like the cliffhangers, they build excitement. No one accuses that of Infinity War and Empire Strikes Back, so I won't hear either. It's a long animated film, I think the longest in history, and it occasionally shows in the pacing. It does feel that the rumored Spider-Gwen movie got folded into the script here with an extended prologue that a long first act setting up so much before we ever get to the Spider-Verse stuff. It's noticeable, but honestly I don't care. That entire section is so character focused, rich with thematic elements and world building that pays off in spades by the end. And can I just say that I love that there's a healthy family dynamics in this movie, for the most part, it's just refreshing. When it gets to the multiverse shenanigans, I'm happy to see it commit while not becoming incoherent. There is a chaotic feeling to the proceedings that can feel like a lot, but it's intentional by design, similar to everything everywhere all at once. And it mostly works. My struggles came from a flickering projector in my theater, plus rude people distracting me. Like literally they were, they were kicking and having burping contests and spit food in the aisles in front of them. And I've seen a lot of people say this as well online, but the sound mixing seemed way off. I had a hard time making out a lot of dialogue because it was so quiet. Could be the theater speakers, or what I'm seeing is that the volume needs to be turned up all the way for this movie and how it was mixed because the writers have come out talking about that. But at the same time, all theaters are gonna be different. That's known going in. So if your theaters have to be on max volume for your film to be heard the right way, maybe you need to take another look at your sound mixing. But all of those distractions, I really needed subtitles. I love subtitles. These issues almost made me feel like I couldn't review it fairly, but I'm not going to hold it against the film until I see it again. And at home, these problems won't matter anymore. It is something that needs to be addressed though, and it is a common thing I'm seeing. I am honestly dumbfounded at how well this balanced character, action, groundbreaking animation, and fan service. It never loses sight of its motivations for all involved. There's lots of meat to chew on as the best Spider-Man stories often deal with impossible moral dilemmas. The one here is eerily similar to the one in No Way Home, but not in a way that feels cheap, but in a way that expands it. The main villain is a serious deep cut I was stoked to see, and the other villains present a scenario that's as compelling as you'd expect a great Spider-Man story to contain. Expertly written stuff, the inner fan of me was squealing. It's just incredible. And I wasn't expecting so many overt references to the MCU side of things, and that's just plain cool. As a lifelong Spider-Man fan, though, across comics, video games, movies, and especially animation, this is fan service beyond your wildest expectations, but in a way everyone can enjoy, and diehards can freak out, and that's the way it should be. My friend and I discussed this as two ends of the spectrum and it was cool to see that done right and done well. Some of the plot is guessable, a lot of it is not, and I was shocked by how fresh, vibrant, and unpredictable it felt. Emotions and edge of your seat moments were at an all time high with creative set pieces. Add on the fact that you get some of the most interesting, vivid, and sometimes scatterbrained animation ever put to the medium and you're in for an epic unlike no other than the film that preceded it. The soundtrack was really good too. Maybe not quite as memorable as the first, but still fire. Along with the first, deserves to be in the category of best animated films ever. Beyond excited for the next one. Honestly, it could be one of the best trilogies in recent memory, maybe even ever as well. I can't wait to see it again. I give Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse 
five out of five stars. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. There's more content coming soon. Remember, always look for the good.